The top three stories of the week. Welcome back to All That Jam, where music has no limits. We have the top three stories coming up and a couple other things we want to touch on. How are you doing this week, Amanda? Hey, Kevin. I'm good. I'm out here in California uh, getting ready for the three-day locomotion festival that starts um, this afternoon. So really, really looking forward to that. Nice. Uh, did you see Dead & Company set list last night for Jerry's birthday? Did you, you know what? I'll be catch? honest. I did not see it. I'm just uh, kind of getting caught up on the news. Tell me about it. Um, they busted out how sweet it is and Lazy River Road. Lazy River Road was out of space, but how sweet it is in the first set. And uh, apparently they did a Jack Straw that was back in good old Grateful Dead days, Stempel. Ah, uh, wow. Hey, they re rearranged it back to the original. <laughs> well, I saw. Maybe these pictures were not from last night, but I saw some of the visuals and it looked like they had done something with like people dancing. Um, and it looked like they were just dancing across the sphere, you know, on the, right. uh, the background. And it's really, really beautiful. Um, that's awesome. You know, I, I really love, uh, just love the thoughtfulness there. And I'm sure everyone that was there recognized what a special night that was. Yeah. I'm glad sure. they've been pushing themselves, doing some Me extra too. song. You know, it Me seems too. like every night they at least do a bust out. Yeah. Something I that think was so. a year. And you, you know, know what? It's got to feel good. Yeah. So mm. that's that's awesome. All right. Well, let's get some uh, uh, some sad things out of the way first, and then we'll talk a little Monda Green and then get into the top three stories. We had two uh, big losses this week in the jam band community. You want to just give us a little bit uh, about that? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so I think within the last, honestly, 24 hours or so, you know, last day or so, um, the music community at large has um, lost two really pivotal members who um, were maybe not on stage, but were just as important as anyone on stage. And um, one being Johnny R. Good, who was the lighting designer for the Disco Biscuits for many years. Um, Good had been ill um, for at least the last year, year and a half, um, with a couple different things going on, and um, had not been doing well. Um, and so that that was a situation that a lot of people in that particular music community were aware of. There had been some GoFundMe set up um, back in 23 for him, um, and so you know, still so devastating um, to lose someone like that. So I know that in the biscuits world, that is. That is something especially that's really, really been difficult. Um, I have less information about um, this next loss, which um, Michael Everett, who um, I considered a friend, was a, a longtime um, artist. And I, I guess I would just say someone who really, in my mind, created the the beauty of String Cheese Incident. String Cheese Incident um, has always been a band that really connected deeply to beauty and and creating that sense of kind of magic and and to me that is synonymous with what michael everett produced um for many many years and um he passed away my understanding is very suddenly um and so don't know really much more than that but i think it's um just important to take a minute and honor the people who make the scene for us in so many ways well, it's so many iconic posters people who do not know his name will probably have seen his posters I guarantee. And he did not just do work for cheese. I guess I should really be um, mentioning that he he did work for Panic, lots of other bands, as well as his own work. Um, I have a, I can't tell you how many of his prints of all different kinds I have at my house and um, had recently gotten a few more from him that he had just been testing out. And so just a, a truly beautiful person. And, um, you know, being out here at Locomotion, I think, with cheese for the next couple of days is going to be um, even more meaningful. Yep. Yep. I'm sure they'll make a, a nod to him of some kind. Uh, yes, over I would weekend. think so. Yeah, for All sure. Right. So All right. here we you, go. You're at, yeah. a, you're at a festival this weekend, and I guess you're not going to a festival next weekend because you're going to a festival the week <laughs> after that, right? Is that what we're doing? Uh, yeah, you got it. You, you totally, you nailed my schedule. I, I, um, yeah, I'm here in California, come back early next week. And then a week after that, it is time for Mondo Green, Kevin. Can you believe it? 
Yeah, I'm excited. So we can we can announce a little bit. We can do a teaser, right? We're gonna tease. Yeah, we're gonna do a nice tease. So um, I know Kevin, you and I are super excited um, to share that we are going to be participating in some programming at Mondo Green through um, the pods or cabins that are being organized um, by members of the fish community officially. You know, through Fish, through AEG. Um, our friends at Bands for Racial Equity, Free and Groove Safe are managing one of these cabins. And we're gonna get to do a couple hours of fun um, activities over the course of the four days. Um, maybe I won't say too much more than that, but I would say just, we're gonna be sharing a lot as it gets closer. If anyone's gonna be at Mondo Green, which I know a lot of us are, um, just look around for those cabins. They're gonna have, um, be stocked with water, ice they're going to have power maybe ac i don't know but mm -hmm. be 10 of them and so scattered all about i think maybe ga camping there's going to be fun stuff going on for the entire weekend nice I'm looking forward to that Me yes too. i'm gonna got that i am the what plus guys are going to be there too there's going to be uh i was joking yesterday and i made a schedule for one day of trying to do everything they're offering, the yoga and the woods and the cornhole tournament and the mm -hmm. race and the Lee Fordham's thing. And it, it basically was the whole day. And then at seven o'clock I went to sleep because I'd been up since seven in the morning to do everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that app, the Monogreen app is just starting to really populate with mm. some cool stuff. Kevin, you can go get your beard trimmed. That's not a euphemism. You can literally go get your yeah. beard trimmed on site. Um, I mean, yeah. this is, um, and I say this in a, a really positive way with a smile, this is not the festivals of yore. They're really mm. making sure that maybe because during the daytime, you know, it's gonna be quiet in a sense, no music, right. there will be plenty to do, just as right. you said. Climate change, they have to do all this because of climate change. You can't just have a bunch of people well, I guess you could have gone back up like in Maine somewhere where it's 10 degrees cooler. For the could, yeah. part. Well, could you imagine? Can you imagine dragging all of our old asses up to Maine on an right. Air Force yeah. base again? <laughs> you know, it's the anniversary of the first uh, um, from the It Festival, the first day of It Festival today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Kevin, um, I, I, I was not into fish that much then. Okay, I was going to ask you, so I, I feel like we must have talked about it, but I couldn't remember yeah, what your kind of fish festival history was. I, I, I saw three shows in February 20, in February 03, and then I didn't see fish again until they played Merryweather in 09 or 10, whenever it was. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I um, Kids. You know, you have kids all of a sudden. Well, for sure. And listen, it timing is everything definitely it's i saw i was at all the festivals up through um 98 through through the great one and then that's it so for me it's gonna be really fun and um yeah it's gonna be same same different different <laughs> yeah exactly good stuff all right why don't we top into these top three stories of the week and let our listeners uh get back to their lives don't forget to like and subscribe Oh, we can't sit and talk all day. Are you sure? <laughs> all right, just kidding. All right. So yes, top three stories. Um, I'm going to start with a story that maybe has a bit of a local feel, but I'm sure is not the only example of, of this. Um, I found an article, um, Cedar Rapids, not a place, honestly, that I normally think of in terms of um, supporting live music or the music industry, but um, Cedar Rapids has launched this really cool effort to do just that. Um, it's a data-driven um, program, and the purpose of it is to help guide, I guess, community leaders and others how to build a music scene that is sustainable. And so let me just kind of share a little bit about this and we'll, we can talk through it. Um, so the city is collaborating with a whole bunch of uh, different alliances um, and venues, different management companies and the tourism office to launch what they're calling the Cedar Rapids Music Census. So it's a civic led initiative. They wanna collect data and get a really comprehensive understanding of the strengths, needs, of the local music community. That's gonna open in September and run for a month. 
Um, and it's a survey to capture data on demographics, different types of occupation, all kinds of different things, affordability, um, and then also a sense of culture and belonging. And Kevin, I wanted to talk about this because in one way or another, I feel like we touch on these types of things all the time in our conversations. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was an interesting one. Yes, and you're right, Cedar Rapids. It mm -hmm. does not it does not scream hotspot of live music. That's right. So I find it very interesting because either this means that there is a huge proponent driving this, you know, some leader that has some decision making authority to get this going. Or maybe this is something, you know, this topic is something that has a deeper value in general than I maybe think it does in certain places. You know, hopefully, hopefully it ends up being a blueprint that works that can be replicated other places if it's successful. Mm -hmm. Right. I agree. So I actually, Kevin, I was thinking um, I might see if I can reach out to somebody over there because I am really curious. I haven't heard of anything like this. I had been talking to you, I think, recently about a census type thing for the jam band community, because I think mm -hmm. data is really important. Basic information can help make decisions. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm curious to see what ends up happening there um, is brand new. And so uh, yeah, you know, the, hopefully people will participate. And then they can go from there. Um, so that's, that's our first story. Um, second one is a little bit more of a international feel. This is not happening in the States. It's a streaming transparency code. And this is in the UK. So um, this is called, I'm going to try to get this right, a voluntary code of good practice on transparency in music streaming. <laughs> this is something that came into effect just this last week, um, and it's been devised by the music industry over there in the UK as part of a process that the British government's intellectual property office is overseeing. So essentially, um, what it's supposed to do is cover uh, issues from contract terms to royalty reporting, um, and then try to make sure that I guess there's compliance in terms of who's getting paid, who's getting credit for different types of of streaming royalties. Right, right, because they run it like a subscription <clears throat> instead of a radio or a bar mm -hmm. that keeps track of what was paid to pay. And I saw saw in the article that I guess. BMI and ASCAP are both mm -hmm. on board with this. So hopefully this is a good thing for the artist if they're stepping up and saying, yeah, this is going to help us get them some more cash. That's right. And exactly. So um, again, I guess the keyword there really is voluntary, but it's agreed to by these different signatories to create what they're calling minimum standards for good practice in dealings with everyone involved in the music streaming industry. Um, and so there's a whole list of signatories there. Um, and, you know, I think people have to try things and see what sticks and see what actually works. Um, mm -hmm. But this feels like something that if, if parties are committing to in good faith voluntarily, it seems like it has a chance. Now, this is the UK. I mean, it's as much as, listen, how much music has come out of that part of the world that has transformed all of us one way mm -hmm. or another um, as an industry. I honestly don't know um, if the size or kind of the scope of the industry out there in terms of music makes it easier to do something like this. Plus just the way government is run is so different in the States. Mm -hmm. So I don't know like if this would even translate over here, but we'll see. We'll see. They got to do yeah. something. Got to do something and got to try. And so I respect the fact that, that there's people out there, uh, you know, just attempting different things. And so this, I, I consider it a positive story, whereas a lot of times it's it's all lawsuits. Maybe this could help save right. some legal fees here and there. Who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, so I wanted to mention that. And of course, we will share links to all of these stories. So people want to go on and read for themselves, including the actual um, letter of the law of that code, because um, it's, it's pretty detailed. Um, Last story for the week, um, I just thought this kind of came across not only to me, but a lot of other people as um, pretty amazing news. It's a Robbie Robertson tribute event that has just been announced um, featuring 
dare I say everyone, <laughs> seems mm -hmm. like it. Um, this fall in LA, the Kia Forum is going to present a tribute um, to the life and legacy of um, Robbie Robertson, of course, from the band, um, beyond iconic, the achievements of, of his lifetime of work. Um, mm -hmm. I think Star Stud, it doesn't begin to explain it though, Kevin, do you? It's the last waltz plus. Uh-huh. Yeah. It really it's is. Crazy. Um, my friend T uh, tried to get tickets. And when he pulled up the tickets for the pre-sale, aisle seats were 10 to $20 more. They were listed as premium seats. Hmm. Which just I was on the like, aisle. that's the new one. Yeah, just along the aisles of every section were all premium seats, and they were 20, 10 to twenty dollars more than the seat next to it. It's officially now, I think, synonymous buying a concert ticket or getting a seat on an airplane. <laughs> uh, it is. It's I was like, that is so crazy. Because <laughs> that's uh. exactly, you know, you have you have levels within the level <laughs> of right. seat that you're getting um uh, hey I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe they're gonna be doing something fun in the aisle i don't know uh, i'm sure that it will be filmed I, it's that blackbird presents as part of it mm -hmm. who did the last waltz thing a, a few thanksgivings ago or for a couple thanksgivings and uh yeah. i'm sure that it'll get released eventually so we all get to hear it maybe it'll stream trey our buddy will be there right oh yeah amongst let's see let Top me let me pull top he name did. on the list i know i saw that right like wild um all right so who else we got here i mean the the list does really go on and on um eric clapton bobby van morrison um i mean it's it's a ton of people one thing i did notice as i was reading through um is that it looks like scorsese is going to um lead the mm -hmm. production yeah, team involved for this again which is really yeah. cool but they've got a bunch of other people uh who are going to be doing some of that executive production work um mm -hmm. who have of course just a themselves a very long list of credits for um projects like this you know yeah. and uh one night only program you know kevin my first thought was once i kind of got over the like wow factor of of seeing all these names was coordinating even just one night so it'll be thursday october 7th um, in la all of these different people that in itself is a minor miracle so you know these people really want to be there to try to make that work um it's amazing to me i don't know if you remember years ago with tab trey used to do it makes no difference and uh, he really handled the vocal well on it. So I'm wondering if it, it'll pop up and he gets to sing that. But I think that's one of those ones that uh, like every like plunger with Humphreys when they said everybody wants to play plunger. I think that's like one. If you're a vocalist, Ooh. you want to sing that song. That song. You just mentioned the name and I start crying. <laughs> it's it's right. just beyond beautiful. And yeah. um, I mean, like so much of the band's catalog. But yeah, that one, when I see the last waltz, um every year out in You're colorado perfect. it is uh yeah no doubt no matter what's going my, on he stops my <laughs> ex-wife one night said to me that i'm going to sing it makes no difference at your funeral and i was like that is so cool i was like that is just the nicest thing you've ever said to me i was like wow <laughs> So I'm putting it in my will. I'm going to hold her to it. If she's still I think around. you should. I think you should. Yeah. I mean, we all, uh, we all can name so many um, songs that just get you. At, I mean, that's new. I haven't heard that one before, but yeah, that would, that would be something, Kev. <laughs> so it was a very, make sure you get it in there. Dark, dark, but nice thought, but that was part of our shit. Yeah. You know, that was well, part of our go. bit where, that yeah. we were a little dark sometimes. It's, you know all what, right. it's beautiful. You, <laughs> anything else you want to throw out um i guess i would just say kevin you know we're coming up here in the next month and a half or so to our is it two year anniversary mm -hmm. of the podcast right yep. Yep. um which is hard to believe but um as we get closer to that i i think there's some fun things that you know we'll be able to do to just share we've got so much awesome content and, and have had so much fun with this. So that had um, occurred to me the other day and I'm really grateful and excited for that. Yeah, it is very exciting. So if you want to know what we're going to be doing, make sure you follow our socials. It's all at all that jam pod. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you comment later anywhere else, like subscribe, share with your friends and remember stay beautiful.
but don't stay underground too long. I'll see you soon, Amanda. All right, Kevin, have a great weekend. Thank you.